Hi everybody. Hi. So, uh, my name is Dr. Adler. My name is Dr. Muhammad. And for both uh, third year residents in the internal medicine uh, residency program at uh, Marshfield and uh, falls as the topic um, today. I think that in general uh, when I've done these talks in the past uh, um, <coughs> it being like an, a discussion and uh, open for questions has been uh, has been a nice way to do them instead of just uh, you know talking about the topic and expecting silence and <laughs> it's it, it makes it more interactive more interesting I think if you, if uh, you know feel free to interrupt us and ask questions at any point in time or anything so I think I was just going to start uh, maybe with uh, a broad overview of falls and maybe some of the things that cause falls and and uh, we'll we'll kind of go from there so uh, falling in general is, uh, is not a normal thing. Um, it's something that uh, usually happens as an accident as you, as you go up in age. Um, and uh, it, you have a higher uh, possibility of having a fall later on um, in life for a, a number of reasons. Um, and sometimes it's hard to find one particular reason. Oftentimes it's, uh, it's one thing here and one thing there, these two things together that, uh, that, that kind of cause your normal, you know, learned uh, behaviors to fail. So uh, there's a lot of different uh, um, compensatory things that the body's able to do um, if one thing were to, were to go bad. So say that your eyesight starts going down a bit you know your ability to to feel and hear and uh, your 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 knowing of that you're upright tends to compensate for that somewhat. So it's when it's when you have two or three things uh, go wrong that you start having a, a more of a chance for a fall. So not only is your sight a problem, but then also maybe you're starting to have hearing problems and with the ear uh, that helps. Uh, let you know that you're upright or that you're off to the side and so those two things together kind of weaken your your body's ability to know how it's positioned and then you know you can have a fall happen um, so it's usually not just one thing but uh, maybe dr. Isak will talk a little bit more uh, on the prevention side of things on how we can we can try and and uh, make up for some of those those deficits so as you age, uh, your body naturally uh, sort of loses its ability to, to do a lot of things, and it's just part of the aging process. Your, um, uh, we actually have Dr. Raymond here, um, our, our uh, uh, program director actually for uh, internal medicine. Uh, so uh, as you age, um, you, you, you naturally have a decrease in your, uh, in your reflexes, uh, you'll have a decrease in your uh, in your muscle strength, uh, and that's sometimes just from uh, you know sedentary lifestyle, uh, not uh, doing the same activities you did once you were younger. Um, your heart and lungs might not necessarily be working as they were when when you were younger, and then that might mean that you're not walking as much and other things. And so um, you know you can you can physically become weaker than what you once were and. And that makes uh, uh, makes it harder uh, to recover from maybe you kind of got knocked off balance a bit or something like that, and harder for you to to be able to regain your balance, and um, and, and that sort of just keeps kind of progressively declining as you as you age. Um, and then I already mentioned the vision and the hearing uh, that can all decline as well with age. Um, uh, some other things that can kind of sneak up on individuals would be uh, some vitamin and nutrient uh, deficiencies and uh, uh, just general uh, decline in nutrition. It's been fairly well shown that, uh, that as you get older, your ability to taste is not quite what it once was and foods that you might have enjoyed are not necessarily as enjoyable anymore and uh, you might not eat on a regular basis and that can lead to weight loss and uh, other things on its own. So uh, like just kind of to, to recap on what I've said, it's a lot of different factors that can all play a role into, into falling. And it's usually not just one thing. 
it's usually taking a pick from a few of these things and all together it uh, has an increased risk and we we as a, a medical profession have have identified that falls are a, a bad thing in general I'm sure many of you have uh, you know, family member or friends or maybe even yourselves who have, uh, have fallen or maybe and, and had a poor outcome from it uh, sometimes you can fall and and you don't hurt yourself and then you just don't even think that it was a big deal but uh, it's sort of a warning sign that uh, maybe you have a couple of, uh, of uh, the normal defense mechanisms of the body are impaired and that you're at risk for another fall in, in, in the future. Uh, the things that we really worry about uh, with, with falling is, uh, is an injury that could happen. Uh, particular hip fractures are, are known to be uh, uh, a pretty large, um, uh, a pretty significant event in, in somebody's life in which they can uh, go from being fairly independent at home or, or wherever they were uh, to uh, uh, maybe needing to have a uh, nursing facility and care uh, after that it can be a long recovery process. So uh, we try and, and identify these things early so that uh, we can take whatever corrective steps uh, to try and help out, the, to help out the individual to prevent the fall from happening. And, uh, um, you know, sometimes it's not completely avoidable, but uh, um, but uh, that's that's sort of uh, that's sort of the thought process. Uh, Dr. Adler pretty much covered what are the most common things that lead to the fall. Um, the most common risk factor is as you age. Uh, he mentioned that we lose our reflexes. The other thing is with age, <coughs> um, the the ailment kind of worsens, uh, worsens. The number of conditions related to the health also kind of get more and more. Uh, some patients develop uh, hypertension, diabetes, and uh, nutritional deficiencies, deconditioning due to lack of much activity. So all that cumulatively leads to the uh, falls. In addressing falls, um, what we should focus on is uh, being a physician, what um, we most often see is there are a number of medications uh, which can, uh, particularly uh, medications which help you sleep, and uh, some other medication, they can impair your sense of balance uh, and also they can make you loopy and that um, adds to the uh, additional risk of fall. So <clears throat> if you have experienced a fall or if you have experienced what we call as dizziness, um, then when you go to your doctor, you should bring up these things that uh, your balance is, you have seen that your balance is kind of declining uh, or you have experienced this fall so that your doctor can screen you for the risk factors that you have for the fall and this can be addressed earlier than later because as Dr. Adler was mentioning what we are concerned about, uh, about falls is maybe sometimes it does not lead to injury but when the injury happens it leads to debilitation it leads to disability a lack of functioning and uh, if we address it earlier then we can uh, prevent those falls um, and always mention to your physician about uh, these uh, uh, near syncope events where we f you feel like you're oozy and although you do not pass out and this is not normal. Um, and even if you experience a fall which you, uh, to, to you might be something insignificant but your uh, provider uh, can screen you for the risk factors that can lead to some serious fall and injury. And the other thing is uh, physical therapy or the activity uh, is, is one of the biggest factors which can help uh, in preventing the falls and keep you moving. So keep on moving, that's, why, uh, that's how you will not lose your muscle tone, that's how you will maintain your strength and uh, it will help you, uh, as Dr. Ezra was mentioning, with, with age we lose our uh, muscle tone and muscle strength, but if we keep on moving, uh, that can help us in preventing the falls. Um, as you age, you might not be able to do strenuous activities, and you do not need that, but some uh, light exercises like just a regular walk or uh, water exercises that can uh, help in maintaining the muscle strength and, and the balance. Even things like uh, Tai Chi classes or, or uh, aerobic and yoga classes, there's, there's actually been some good data, uh, some, some studies that we uh, 
that, that, that have shown that there's been a pretty good benefit uh, with individuals who have uh, gone to Tai Chi classes, for instance, and that were designed to help with fall prevention. So, so uh, keep in mind things like that. You don't have to go and, uh, and like, like lift weights and uh, do stuff like that. There's plenty of uh, stuff that you can do that's a little less impact, but uh, can have a big impact on your, um, your potential falls in the next uh, you know, years to come. Yeah, and in addition, pay particular attention to your shoes. If your shoes are worn out, that can also lead to the uh, falls. And uh, remove, identify and remove hazards at home, particularly if there are newspapers, electrical cords, uh, phone cords in your way, uh, you should remove that so that you do not get entangled uh, in those cords and, and, and that can easily lead to the fall. And also um, identify the easy slip rugs at your home and kind of double tape them to the ground so that you do not slip on the rugs. And also try to um, keep the things that you frequently use within your easy reach uh, so that uh, particularly uh, for the people who have joint issues and they cannot walk much or who have, who are, um, due to the uh, weight issues, they cannot walk m uh, more than a couple of steps. Um, Putting things within easy reach helps in preventing the uh, falls. And also, um, um, the sport uh, things like uh, putting rails, particularly in your uh, uh, bathtub, uh, where you are at a risk of easy fall, that also helps so that you can grab to the things. And also, when particularly when going upstairs, having both side rails can also help you uh, support yourself and uh, it can prevent you from falling. Uh, try to walk wi with shoes uh, when they, there is easy slip floor, and um, these are the these are the most common things at home that we can do uh, to prevent the fall. And particularly at night, um, you should try to keep uh, your, your light switch close to your access so that you turn on the light first before getting out of the bed, uh, so that you you watch your step uh, before you get out of the bed. And uh, always take some time um, when you're asleep or you have been in laying position for too long or you have been sitting for too long, um, move to the side of the bed, hang your legs and sit there for three, four minutes and then uh, gradually stand up. That can also help in preventing falls because when you're laying in the bed for too long, the, the, the distribution of the blood is in such a way that when, once you suddenly get up, it can easily uh, lead to fall due to decreased blood supply to the brain. So, uh, and kind of playing off what Dr. Isak had just mentioned about uh, home safety, uh, that's a big, uh, a big component of things and, and trying to eliminate uh, potential pitfalls that you have at the home that, that could lead to a fall. And uh, we actually, um, I think most of you know about the, the ADRC, or the Aging Disability Resource Center. They're, they've got the other talk going on in our normal room, I think, right now, for uh, diabetes education. And, and uh, they're actually a great resource. And they'll, they'll have individuals, who I think, uh, uh, from uh, multidisciplinary individuals, so occupational therapists and physical therapists and things like that, that can come into the home and, uh, and assess uh, it for safety, like where the potential areas of problem are, like there's a series of three steps leading to the back door that doesn't have a hand railing and they're narrow steps or that this is a particularly steep or narrow uh, staircase leading to the basement and things like that and, and uh, can come and help troubleshoot ways that that you can uh, modify your home to make it more more friendly and safe for you. So. Um, the, the ADRC is a really good resource for, for that if you have questions or concerns about your home, whether it's safe or not. Yeah. And uh, one more thing, although you might be good at balance, but when you get to the point where you feel that you're, you're a little off balance, just don't feel confident that you can walk good. I think it's always good that uh, we, if we use these sportive devices like, uh, um, like a stick or a walker, that can always uh, help uh, in preventing the falls. That's, that's the biggest uh, thing that we have found helping in preventing the falls, particularly in the old age population. I just want to <coughs> add one thing here, that when we, when we are 
when you heard all, all these talks about falls and, and, and what follows with that and the precautions you need to take, just keep in mind that, you know, when, when a person falls, especially when, you know, when we were kids, we would fall all the time and we would just stand up and we would not start thinking about health consequences of a fall or like, you know, we didn't even think like, you know, whether we have broken a leg or not. Uh, those of us who did, they were crying and their parents found out what, what was wrong with us. As we age, the reaction to uh, reaction to a fall can be can be blown out of proportion sometimes. Fall is a it can be a can be a haunting event for us. When we fall down, we rethink everything. It might be like you know like we have to rediscover all walking and safety steps again. But it's worth it. Uh, it's not. It's very important not to limit your life by your own self unless your physician or your caregivers ask you to do so. I stopped going out, I stopped going to Walmart because I fell down. That's not, that's not good of a reason unless you, you clearly are told not to do that because of your risk of fractures and, and what follows. So uh, again, as it was mentioned, you use your muscle or you lose your muscle. So especially with coordination and gait is a, is a complex mechanism where you get up out of the chair, you take a few steps on that direction, you come back and you sit down. Millions of neurons are playing part in all of that. Many areas of your brain are involved and that coordination is something that you learn. We were not born with that, right? We, we just learned how to do that and then we, are good, we were good with it for the rest of our lives. So the, 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 the worrisome part is that if we stop using our muscles and stop stimulating our nerves in the way we, we used to do, we can pretty much be uh, bed bound or chair bound. And it's very important. So when, when you see a doctor, uh, they are they're always mindful of this, that we want to make sure that you do as much activity as possible um, and as much as your safety would allow. And there is always going to be even an, uh, even a, 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 a you, you have to find a balance between your safety and your, uh, your activity, your liberty in, your, in, in all the activities that you do. So it's very important for us to, to make sure that, you know, we just don't wait and limit our lives or, or feel like, you know, we have to limit things in our lives because we had a fall. It's always better to get it checked out uh, and have a sort of interdisciplinary team or multiple disciplines like your physical therapist, uh, people in ADRC, um, your physician. There should be an interplay of things that you should utilize as, a, as your resource. And you are responsible. You fell down. So if you fell down, you are the one who is responsible to make sure that you utilize maximum resources from everyone. I am a physician. If, say, I have 30 minutes with you, I may not understand what you are trying to say to me in terms of what you are, unless you tell me. So don't assume that your physician or your caregiver would know how it's affecting your life, how it's limiting your activity. And don't be shy of asking for more help. And don't be shy of telling caregivers, I'm not getting enough help because I, I, I feel like, you know, with this fall or these fall episodes that I had, I don't feel like, you know, I'm being helped enough. So you have a lot of resources in community. Make sure you go out and explore all of them. So uh, does anybody have any particular questions? That was actually quite a lot of, <laughs> of information. I'm sure people... Uh, yeah, I'm wondering, uh, are any of the supplements like glucosamine and chondritin helpful to your muscles and, and bones and stuff to help keep them stronger as well? So I'm not sure on what the actual uh, data studies and such have shown with glucosamine and chondritin and how that helps uh, joints. I know a lot of people take that particular supplement uh, if they've got arthritis or they've got joint problems and that's sort of how it's advertised, but uh, I, I'm, I'm actually not sure if there's been good data to show that that really does improve your joint strength or your muscle strength in particular, um, uh, as opposed to things that we do know that does help, uh, like physical therapy. Um, so I guess an <laughs> indirect way to answer your question, I'm not sure uh, about glucosamine chondritin in particular, 
Um, but I do know that if you are interested in doing some sort of uh, muscle strengthening or joint strengthening, then probably the best way that we know available right now is physical therapy and to, to try and get a, a, a direct uh, uh, involvement with the physical therapist and they can work with you on particular joint areas that might be a problem and, uh, and, and work on overcoming the particular problems that you might have. Uh, that would be my recommendation. Oh, along with that, then you came in person, just get a, do you have to have a referral to <clears throat> go to physical therapy or can you, um, you know, just ask on your own? So I, I think you actually are able to, uh, to, to talk to individual physical therapists' uh, offices on your own. I'm not sure how that works with insurance coverage. So uh, most of the time when I'm seeing patients in the clinic and I'm referring over to physical therapy, I, I mean, maybe you know more about that than I, than I do in particular, Dr. Raymond, but, um, but when, when somebody comes to me and asks if they want physical therapy, I almost will never say no. <laughs> There's, it's usually a, a, a good reason and it's a very easy process on our end to, to, to put a referral through. So if you even have a question whether it's going to be a problem with insurance or not, then I would just talk to your primary doctor and say, hey, I think I might need physical therapy for X reason, and, and they'd be more than happy, I would think, to, to, to help try and, uh, and get you set up with, uh, with an official referral if that's what needs to happen. And along with that, I just want to say um, I really appreciate you all being here and giving us this information. We have so many resources that we're so fortunate to have. This whole senior center, um, most of us were in a yoga class right before we okay. came here. And it has made such a difference in my feeling of more strength and flexibility. And it's gentle yoga. You know, it's geared to us because None of us are getting any younger, and you know, you guys will get there someday. If we're lucky. A point of view of a 64 year old, I mean, you know, you just think you've got so much time, all of a sudden you're there, and you hear so much negative about, you know, what can happen, you're getting older, this and that. And so you do have to take it upon yourself to just decide. Um, and I think another thing is positive thinking because you can get very down just thinking you're just going to slide down from here. You know, you got to stay up and keep trying to, you know, just get the optimum. Yes, life. keep moving. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even yeah, if it's like a little thing, yes. mm -hmm. keep moving. And I would say before, be, sorry, you wanted to say something? I just would. Did you? Oh, go ahead. So I would say that you know keep moving is 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 a very important thing before we we are dealing with all these falls and troubles related to that. Those people who are active, they live longer. We all know that. Mm -hmm. Like you know, you're those who sit around, even those who exercise a lot, but for rest of their time they're sitting and on the couch and watching TV. Those guys are not doing any favor to them as much as themselves as much as people who are active all the time. So. You count it like within like you know 10,000 steps, making sure you are taking a, um, a walk every hour or so, and making sure you are you are taking and moving around. It it just is gonna continue to refresh all your areas of your brain that deal with coordination, deal with 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 gait, deal with circulation. When you when we stand up, our blood pressure tends to go down. Our heart tries to pump faster. Our vessels become constricted so that the blood pressure can maintain itself when we stand up. And as you mentioned, as we age, all these uh, abilities are going to decrease, uh, of, of abilities of body and reflexes of body to react. So it's not only reflexes as we, as we see, as we get up and walk that are important. It's stuff which is happening inside our body as well. But I would tell you that, you know, in 60s, I have seen people in their, unfortunately, even in their 20s or 30s, which are a lot sicker than people in their 60s. That's the dilemma of, of us today. Uh, but I would say like, you know, if you are healthy, if you can, try to participate in these activities as your body can handle. As you mentioned, gentle yoga, you know, as much as you can handle or your body can handle, it's, it's just really worth it of an investment. Well, I know there's one gal in our class, she's got Parkinson's, and she said it's really helpful for balance. Good. Mm -hmm. That's you know, benefit of that. Yeah. 
what I like is just kind of the camaraderie too, you know, just other people like you, because it's so, if you would just be at home, you wouldn't probably, t I mean, it, it seems like you could probably get more down about it and keep a good attitude is important and mm -hmm. just feeling like other people are, you know, we have a little chit chat time and, mm -hmm. you know, it's all good. We kind of support each other mm -hmm. and it's very helpful. And I know when I had a knee replacement, that physical therapy was just key. Mm -hmm. And it was so helpful, and I kept going at it. I just kind of, that's why we went <laughs> before we came in here to just um, do the pedaling. And um, just to keep that going, you know, just because it's so much time after surgery doesn't mean you can just stop then. And I wanted to ask a question. I heard somewhere that sometimes, because you hear about hip fractures so often in um, more elderly people, that actually the hip fractures first and then the fall, and that's all to do with nutrition or calcium or whatever. Is that true? So as we age, our bones become weaker, and it's a very standard practice to screen everybody for weak bones, uh, anybody who is above 60. And particularly, it, the, this situation is more common in, in, in uh, women just because of the hormonal balance. Um, and having weak bones with age puts you at a high risk of fracture. So fall happens first and then fracture happens. Bones can become so weak that, you know, sometimes say you, you just had to jump or you just had to take one large step and the bone is so brittle that it would break and then a person would fall so so that is again like you know as the, the bones become brittle that's that's something that can happen so uh, you, someone mentioned about supplements so there are supplements which are uh, I just want to touch on that subject if it is helping you we usually avoid saying don't use it it's 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 of no use because you know i would tell you there might be i might be using supplements at my home i may have a belief that honey helps me more than other things so i'm maybe using all that or multivitamins and 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 other minerals which which i'm not prescribed by any physician but i am using if they are helping you they they, they and if you have a belief in them uh, they might be benefiting you when we talked about like the core of all of these like you know when we when we, we are purely talking in scientific terms like chondroitin and 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 sulfate they, it has been tested in um, in, uh, in in medical literature uh, scientifically in those studies it did not show any benefit for joints even and and when you take it orally and then talking about falls people fall one one thing which we might have touched before i came in Pain is sometimes people with real bad pains, knee pain, back pain. Pain in of itself can can or medications that you use for pain can can elicit a fall or can can make you in a condition where you are in severe pain. You go off balance and you fall. So it's very important to take care of pain. Now supplements, some of them that are prescribed to you like calcium or vitamin D, those are extremely important. Even even if the doctor says like you know find it over the counter and use it take it religiously because the calcium, vitamin D, they maintain muscle strength and then they also are going to uh, make sure that your bones are not going to be in a condition as you mentioned which is going to predispose you to develop fractures. Uh, another thing that I would like to mention is uh, thanks to technology you now we have Apple watches and also life alert and if somebody is, a, is at an increased risk of fall I think um, they should really consider uh, having these gadgets on their body. So uh, if unfortunately they ex experience a fall, then they can uh, access people and call for help. Uh, and automatically the life alert and the, uh, the other gadgets can automatically inform whoever uh, you are, have listed in or at least call an emergency. And they can get to you. Because we have seen uh, people coming to us who unfortunately fell and they were found like a day later or two days later um, because they could not get up and they could not call somebody for the help. So these sort of gadgets really help in those kind of situations. It might be for somebody you know who is at a risk of frequent falls. I do water exercise, and uh, how does, does that benefit as far as? Uh, mm -hmm. Maintaining the muscle strength and the balance, it does. Yep, and water, water exercise is a really good uh, for individuals who have uh, joint problems, uh, which 
regular activities are too painful because it uh, offloads that water offloads all the weight that's put on the joints so um, yeah I, I highly recommend uh, uh, water exercises whether it be you know actually swimming or just like water aerobics uh, things like that because it can make a big uh, big difference yeah, I would. Wa I'd keep it up. They have a very good program in Y. I see mm -hmm. them. I usually go to pool. Yeah, and I, I do. Usually do the athletic one. Good, yeah. excellent. It's uh, arthritic one is uh, see their exercises and they they do a fantastic job. I think. And you know, I was I was I was listening to a radio show the other day and they were telling that it's uh, being in water and exercising is better than being on the moon and exercising because <laughs> water, <laughs> the gravity factor is, is just going to be balanced in a way that you can move your joints around and your joints are going to be more lax they are going there is going it, to it's going to enhance space between two joints so natural areas where you hurt more they can be utilized more uh, so you can do more activity and uh, and again low impact less pain after that um, it's more soothing for your muscles and your body in general. The the, the particular class at the at the Y, uh, mm -hmm. just for maybe other uh, individuals in the class here that might not know what time there. Do you know happen to know what the schedule that is off the top of your head? Yeah, there's a couple senior uh, exercise <coughs> classes uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, one starts at eight thirty. There are three one, and then at nine fifteen, there's another senior one. And, well, there's a senior one, and, and this is in the <coughs> therapy pool, so it's at the warm pool. And in the okay. morning, right? In the morning, yeah. Yep. Well, I think they have other ones sometimes if they have enough interest. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, they, I, I really like it. <coughs> Another thing that people well, need to think about, well, and I probably wouldn't have thought about it except that it just happened yesterday. A lady was coming into Walmart and they had big rugs by the door and I don't know if it was puffered up some or if it was her shoe that she had on or what but she got caught on that rug and down she went and she cut her hand and her knee uh, so just kind of keep in mind that if you're especially as winter comes you know there's a lot of people you know stores that do put rugs there that yes. mm -hmm. Remember, you gotta pick up those feet, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think you guys have lived probably longer than, uh, than definitely longer than me in this weather. Uh, I came in 2007, <laughs> and I still make the same mistakes I used to do when the winter season starts. So let's not not talk about driving and other stuff. But I can tell you that you know one thing that you got to do in winter is it's as simple as that. Both of your hands should be free when you are outside. Don't put them in any coat or don't put them in and and it can it just does not in order for a person to fall down just know that it's such a complex mechanism of interplay between your brain and your muscles that you don't need much of disturbance for you to fall down even for a healthy person even for a person in their 20s or 30s or 40s people fall down all the time it's it's about impact of what what it causes on them so so just make sure in winter weather or whenever you are walking your hands should be free because then you can protect yourself you can have a better balance if you're holding something you're gonna see whether and if something is as good as like you know a, a computer that you really like you're gonna think about trying to save that reflexly or you are you, so, so it's, it, it can have an impact on you and then also making sure you are watching your step you always say watch your step and uh, and it's very important to do that uh, I was with my uh, I was coming back from Pakistan on my flight here and my my mom came to uh, airport to see me off and then you know I just looked back and like you know when she was walking with me there was a small um, elevation on the road and her foot got stuck in that and she went face down and, and she got all bruised and, and, and all of that. So I would say like, you know, part of the reason was that it was a chilly day and she was putting her hands in her coat. So one thing that could have prevented face injury was, was going to be if her hands were free. So it's, it's always better to leave your hands free. And uh, if it's winter, on, go there with good pair of gloves so that, that your hands are free and outside. If you want to use a bag, Make sure it's it's on your uh, tied around your arms or shoulders and and is no, you are not holding it in your hand as much as possible. Um, exercises, you know, we know for weight loss, muscle tone, strengthening. Does it help with the bone density too? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. That's so, swimming in of itself does not have as much impact on bone density as anything that we do when we are 
doing a weight bearing exercise. Mm -hmm. So swimming and biking, I think, are less in bed, right? Yes. Biking too, right? But any activity like you know, fast walks, and uh, if you are gonna run marathons, then again, you are gonna be at slightly higher risk of losing your bone. But otherwise, any kind of good activity that you do with like your with, with your yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's very good. It does yeah. uh, prevent bone loss. Mm -hmm. Especially things to prevent bone loss would be uh, some mild uh, strengthening, weight strength or um, muscle strengthening exercises and and uh, core strengthening. Uh, your your muscles they attach to your bones, and when you when you work your muscles out, it sort of also tells your bones your your tells your body that the bones need to become stronger as well because they're becoming stronger. They're attaching to the bones, sort of interplays there. And so when you work out your muscles. Your, your bones then, by nature of them also being together, uh, do get a little benefit from that. So it's a little bit different uh, if, you're, if you're targeting uh, an exercise to try and get your, your bones to be stronger. It's a little different than, um, than if you were just trying to, say, um, work on your conditioning and uh, your breathing and with walking and things like that. Just a little different. But any, any amount will help. Any other questions or exhausted everybody's? <laughs> <laughs> and also when, when you have one more thing, like we already spoke about medications, your prescription medications can very well be a cause of your fall and they might need adjustment. So while you are, you might be very good at taking all the medications when you have these falls and, and, and all these episodes, it's always better to get yourself checked out so your physicians uh, will always look at your medications and, and see what could be a cause of that. As we mentioned, blood pressure medications, sleep aids, all of those, uh, some of them might, might be prescribed uh, to you. Some of them might be extremely necessary for you, uh, but they still might need some sort of an, uh, adjustment in their dosing and, and route of administration or timing of administration to prevent uh, fall episodes in future. Yeah, our phys your physician can also consider some alternative which is not as sedating or as prone to the fall. So it's always good to mention to your uh, physician. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, a dose of a medication for a, for a 45 to 50 year old individual uh, will have a big time different effect uh, on that same person when they're in their 80s, for instance. And it's just the normal aging process and metabolism changing and, and things like that. So. Uh, you might have been tolerating this medication for a long time for your blood pressure, but just because you're now older than what you once were, that might actually make a big difference. So, yeah. So, I mean, I think that's all that we had in particular. Again, if there are any other questions. Uh, uh, thank you all for, uh, for, for, for coming out. It was really nice to have uh, a lot of people and a big involvement here.